CC Composite can be found under the channel category, and this is a really great effect. If you've never used it before, then hopefully I can pull back the curtain for you and show you why it's such a useful effect. Now I try my best to keep these effects of After Effects tutorials as short as possible, but I think this particular effect needs a little bit more explanation and some use cases for you to start to really understand the power of it and how it can be useful, because it really is a simple effect. Let's apply it to my logo right here. By default, it's doing absolutely nothing. It's actually doing something we just can't see. What this effect does is takes the original unaffected layer and composites it right back on top, at least by default. You see under the composite original, it's set to in front by default. What exactly does that mean though? Well, it's exactly the same if I were to duplicate this layer. Uh, ignore the fact that there was an effect applied to it, but it just made a duplicate of the original layer and put it on top. That doesn't seem that useful, but if I delete that duplicate and go back to CC composite, we can change the composite type from in front to any one of the blending styles. And these are exactly the same as what we have down here in the layer blend modes. And still that doesn't sound all that exciting, but let me show you what we can do with this. First of all, I'm just gonna add a transform effect and I'm gonna put it before the CC composite. What this effect does, if I turn the CC composite off for a second, is just gives me a layer of transform controls exactly like the ones down here. So I'm going to just scale it down a little bit and then I'm gonna re-enable the CC composite. And it's not immediately clear what's happening and that's because of this checkbox right here. RGB only is checked, meaning it's ignoring the alpha channel of the original unaffected layer. But if I uncheck it, my original layer before the transform was applied is back. It's composited in front of everything before the CC composite. And to make this even more clear, I'm gonna add a fill effect before the CC composite as well. And now you can see that we have this second copy behind the original, which is being generated by the CC composite. So transform to scale it down, fill to change the color, and then CC composite to put that original before those effects were applied right back on top. And like I said, we can change this to any one of the blend modes. So if I made this like a bright cyan color, and clicked OK, and then I changed the composite original to say overlay, and I know that's off the recording, but it's down towards the middle. Then I zoom in here, you can see that these colors are being blended together using that overlay. So if I change it to something like this, you can see those colors blending together a little bit better. But now why is this useful? It's because I can do all kinds of duplicating and compositing all on one single layer now, instead of having to make a bunch of duplicates and set their blending modes and add effects to them. And in a lot of cases, that's really convenient to just keep your composition a lot more clean. So let me show you an example of what we could do here. I just removed all the effects by pressing Control Shift E or Command Shift E on a Mac. And let's make a glow. So I'm gonna start by adding a fast box blur. And this will let me just blur out the layer. And then I'll add a CC composite and apply that. Now just like before, I'm gonna uncheck RGB only so it brings that original layer back and now it looks a little bit glowy. But I can also change this from compositing just on top to say screen or even add to make it look even a little bit more bright. And I can adjust that blur radius to play around with the glow and I might even duplicate both of these again. Actually, let's just add another fast box blur. Blur out this version of the layer and then add another CC composite at the tail end of all of this, uncheck RGB only and set this again to add. Maybe blur it out even a little bit more and now if I turn those two off, you can see that we've kind of just added another layer of glow. So that's one application. You can stack effects and even use multiple instances of CC Composite to build something that would normally take many layers to do all on one layer. But something you should take note of is that these blend modes are within the layer only. It's basically blending the original layer into the affected layer. It's not blending it into anything else in the composition. So if I change my blend mode down here to add as well, then it's gonna blend a lot more on top of that background. Now this is really bright and blown out, but I could go to the opacity of that CC composite and turn it down to kind of control some of that intensity. And maybe I'd wanna change it to say screen instead of add if that was too intense. So that's just one use case, but let me remove all those effects again and show you one more example. First, I'm going to fill this on the background, make sure that mode is set back to normal. 
And I'm just gonna change this to black, click OK, and then add a transform effect. And just set the scale to say 98%. And I'll collapse that up and add a CC composite. Uncheck RGB only, so that we get the entire alpha of our original layer and leave it set to in front. So we almost have a little bit of a drop shadow back here. But if I take the transform and CC composite and duplicate them and move them down to the base of the effects stack, and then just click on my layer down here and press E so that we can see all of the copies here. I now have a transform, a CC composite, transform, and another CC composite. I'm gonna select all of those and duplicate them again, drag them to the bottom, and I'm gonna do this just a few more times. Select all of them, drag them to the bottom, and that's probably enough. It looks a little bit weird, but if I grab that fill effect now and go all the way to the bottom just before that last CC composite and let go, take a look at what I have now. It's basically a fake extrusion or a fake 3D look of my logo. And all I have to do to control that extrusion is change the fill color. I could change that to white, or I could get rid of that fill and let's say add a tint, again, just before that last CC composite, set both of these colors to black, and then turn the amount to tint down, and then I'm getting kind of a shaded extrusion. But this is all kind of hard to control because there are so many different copies of the transform effect, and being able to adjust that at all, I would have to go through and adjust every single one of these. But it's actually really simple to fix. I'm gonna delete everything except for the first transform and CC composite, the tint, and the last CC composite. So I just selected those, deleted them, and then I'll select those two original ones again and come up to Edit, Copy with Property Links, and then I'll make sure I deselect those effects and then Paste, bring them back up here. And what that did was linked all of the properties of these duplicates to the originals through expressions automatically. So if I just duplicate these again, move them down one at a time, let's say grab all of these at once, uh, everything right here, duplicate, move them down to the bottom, now we should have that extruded version again. And I'm just gonna click in here, press Control or Command A to select all and then twirl them all down. That way I can get just to the tint to adjust how much of that shading is happening. But remember, this transform and CC composite are the ones that are driving all of the duplicates. So if I go into that transform and say, adjust the scale up to 99, then the extrusion is less. But here's where it gets really cool. If you adjust the position, you can control the angle of the extrusion. In fact, if I change the scale up to 100, then I can kind of get this isometric version of my logo, and I could turn that amount to tint up a little bit, maybe even change the colors. So maybe something a little bit more green, like that, and I'll link both of those colors to the same color. And now I have that 3D version. If I zoom in here, you can clearly see the steps between all of these. So to fix that, you really just need to continue duplicating all of these effects. So I'm just gonna duplicate them one more time, drag them down to just before that tint. And the steps are still spaced out just as much, but my extrusion got twice as thick. So I could bring that position back in a little bit and that choppiness won't be as noticeable. I have noticed this byproduct it kind of gets fuzzy with all of these duplicates. So to fix that, I'm just going to add a levels drag that to just before the tint, switch this to alpha, and then just crush the alpha channel a bit. So bring these in towards the middle, and that will sharpen that right up. You don't wanna to go too far on it, but just something that makes that a little bit more crisp, and there we go. Because it's all driven by that one effect, I can change all kinds of things about this and make some really crazy looking effects. I could even say add a glow effect. If I wanted just the extrusion to glow, I could put that right after the tint, play with the threshold, increase the radius. The possibilities are pretty endless, but basically you can think of it as working with lots of duplicates of your layer without having to make duplicates of your layer. I've found so many uses for this effect. These are just a few, but if you give it a try, I'm sure you're gonna start using CC Composite in your workflow a lot more regularly. But that's all there is to CC Composite. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.